As an initiative under our Asia Wealth Strategy, we want to bring together an exciting lineup of prominent business leaders across sectors, aiming to share invigorating conversations and actionable insights on wealth creation and management. And in our first episode of WOW Talk, we want to explore the relationship between human genome and wealth. How true is the Chinese saying, Fu Guai Ming San Sing, being rich is in your genes? Have you ever imagined that your DNA can tell you a bit about your wealth traits and behaviors? We are very honored to have invited Head of Wealth and Personal Banking of HSBC Hong Kong, Ms. Maggie Ng, and CEO and co-founder of Prenetics, Mr. Danny Yang, to join us today for this discussion. So Maggie, um, I know that HSBC is a treasure trove of customer data. So have you observed any positive relationship between the personality traits and the wealth? I think the personality trait and the wealth goes into, I guess, three phases. The first is um, the person has to be quite disciplined. This is our, the way I have um, observed for those who are very successful. Yep. And if you look at the very successful traders, they are disciplined traders. There's no emotional, it's very rational. Okay. And their decision is made based on whether they think the stock is worth the, the price or not. It's not about um, an you know, emotional attachment to it. So very disciplined and rational. The second is they are always on the outlook for uh, starting early. For you to be disciplined is actually come through as a habit. Yeah. So you have to train yourself to be that disciplined. And which is why I think you know we have launched the Trade 25, we have launched the Flex Invest. All of those are targeting the young audience mm. so that they can start early yeah. and build that um, habit of discipline throughout their world journey. And the last is to always plan ahead. Mm. So plan ahead in terms of, um, for instance, we have recently launched Aladdin capabilities and that allows us to simulate events of, let's say now the UK PM resigned. Mm. How does that event impact your portfolio? And when you have num a number of different events like this, you start to think about, okay, what do I have to do to pivot my portfolio so that I can prevent myself of a downturn or better protect myself in case of any volatilities. So I think the personality trait and wealth goes um, in hand in hand. If you have those personality traits, you, the chance and the odds of you being more successful would be higher. Danny, so from your point of view, do you think that wealth or success traits can actually be identified in our genes? What else can a genetic test tell us? Well, I mean, I'm not sure if you heard, have heard the uh, terms uh, or the slogan that basically you know, genetics loads the gun, mm. uh, but your lifestyle and environment pulls the trigger. Um, so certainly to some ex to a big extent, your genetics define you who you are when you're born, right? But then there's a lot of other factors in terms of your environment, your lifestyle that actually determine success or not. Um, so to be fair, also there's been actually a lot of studies that have said that genetics does play a role in terms of, let's say if you become an entrepreneur, uh, etc. But ultimately it will depend on the individual's hard work, the timing, luck, so many different things needed uh, to be successful or not. Yeah. So I know that um, a genetic test can offer a customer a sneak peek into their health window so that they can make plans according to their health conditions. Is there any limitations to this, Denny? Yeah, I think the key thing to understand about genetics is genetics is a probability. Mm. Yeah? So you have more likely to, let's say, have disease or more likely suffer from a, a drug response, right? And then so I can even share my own results. It's about okay. three, four years ago, I had a genetic test, of course, you know, circle DNA. Um, and I found out I actually had a higher risk for colon cancer uh, due to my genetics. So it did not run in my family, and then so I was very surprised by the result. But because I had a higher risk than a normal individual, I proactively took measures to you know, basically prevent colon cancer from forming. So what I did was I stopped eating red meat from my diet, mm. and I got you know, colonoscopies every two years. If I didn't get my results, I would have never known I had a higher risk, so I was proactively making use of my health genetic data. Yeah, because otherwise I would have probably waited until I was 50 years of age to get a colonoscopy, but we also know with colon cancer, 50% of the cases are detected at stage three or four, mm. which means it's too late. Yeah. So if you have enough data, then you'll actually make proactive measures on your health. Maggie, can you share with us some latest trends and structural changes in wealth management? Oh, absolutely. I think if you look around us, right, we have now a lot of 
wealth disruptors, um, virtual banks being mm. one, and then we have a lot of different tech startup. Um, they are looking at ways, uh, things differently and yep. wealth differently. One, we have to start thinking about, rethinking about what banking proposition is and okay. what, what do we do in the wealth journey. Um, we are, in my view, we are banking as a service. Mm. We are servicing our customers mm. and make sure they can achieve their wealth target. And if I can give you an example, for instance, even fund transfer to me, it's not Traditionally, when we look at banking fund transfer, it is an, um, a way of managing customer ethics and stuff. But if you look at it with another lens, we are a logistic company moving mm. our customers' money from point A to point B. B. So if you have that slight difference in lens and you reposition yourself, then you start to put your customer first. Mm. We are no longer banking knows at all. Let me advise you all these things, right? We are about first listen and understand, then seek to be understood. I, I've, I've learned this somewhere else from another forum. I thought this is perfect. We have to listen to our customers, what they need, and then use the most convenient way to deliver that to them. And sometimes it is about execution only. Yeah. Sometimes it's about the customer wants advice. Sometimes the customer just wants a complete discretionary signed up to you. So meeting the customer at different persona uh, using you know the easiest way and convenience way to deliver to the customers is the new trend of banking. Yeah. So from a little research, we know that you are selling baseball cards to your friends. So from the trial to now running a billion dollar biotech empire, do you think you have the genetic predisposition to entrepreneurship? Well, this is quite easy yeah, because <laughs> my parents were not entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. So, so definitely no. But you know, as I mentioned earlier, wise, you know, genetics is not a death sentence, regardless you know, if you have bad genes, right? Mm -hmm. You know, given the environment, your lifestyle, you can actually create what you want to do with your life, right? Uh, so I think this is very, very important, and, and vice versa. Even if you are given great genes, you still have to work hard at it, yeah. and you still have to you know, go to go to work every every single day. Um, and so it really just depends. I think genetics and lifestyle and environment all come together. Uh, and if you really want to be successful, you have to have hundreds and thousands of things done right. Maggie, how about you? Can you share with us, have you always wanted to be a banker <laughs> since the very, very beginning? An idea occurs to me. I think the whole reason for us as bankers, we, want, we are partaking in this industry, we also want to, what is our purpose? Mm. We want to help define the future of banking, just like generic also help you prevent you know any illness and help to define the future health so we are bankers want to help define the future of banking and where would be the best place to help define the future of banking for Hong Kong <laughs> definitely yeah. would be HSBC yeah. we have so much access to entrepreneurs we have so much access to retail and high net worth individuals we have so much access to corporate if we pull this ecosystem together we could be very very powerful can you share with us how has um, the banking landscape changed since the very beginning when you joined till now? A lot more uh, sense of burning platform, definitely, right? When I first joined banking, it's very comfortable. Banking is look up to, you know, mm. because to my point earlier on, let me tell you how to invest. That was ah. sort of the attitude, because we know more than you. Let me advise you, yeah. right? Now it's very different with internet and um, uh, information flow very transparent. People can search everywhere yeah. about how and what they should invest into. Our role changes and so the burning platform changes from and which is why I mentioned we need to rethink about banking our role. What is our role? Are we continue to be a, you know, we are bankers or we are above all mm. or we are here to service you. We are banking as a service and also the, the way we service you with the, you know, with the coming up of all the virtual banking and also all the tech um, uh, uh, disruptions. How can we make use the latest technologies to help us make it more convenient for our customers and cheaper? To invest. What's your envisioned banking industry for the young force? Well, first of all, I want to say there's something that I was very, very proud of because one of the team told me when they interview for um, uh, candidates, mm. you know, they ask them, you know, why are you joining? Why do you want to join for HSBC? And there's, you know, a number of candidates tells us that they think HSBC is progressive. Mm. Um, they're very active in the market. So that's something that I'm, I'm very pleased to see and these are young, young um, workforce. What we work together with um, internally with the team is to focus on two things. Apart from what I was just saying about we making sure we deliver our purpose, two key 
elements that I think will attract the young workforce. One is focus on DNI. Okay, and DNI doesn't just mean your um, gender, your race, your age. It also means your preference of working hours. Okay. Okay. Um, hybrid working model, for instance. Our investment into digital capabilities means that during, if you remember, quarter one, we had almost like a lockdown in Hong Kong. We are the first bank, maybe the only bank, who can offer our all our RMs frontline to work from home mm. and serve our customers through Zoom. Yeah. Now, if you expand that further. What does that mean? That means we could potentially recruit workforce that cannot come to the mm. office, for instance, if they are disabled. Mm. They can't even travel out of their home. But now I can include them into the workforce. So DNI through digital capability is important. Two is the ESG things. Mm. The youngsters are thinking about, even my kids, and your kids also, going growing up will be saying, what is the world and planet that I'm going to be living in when I, when I turn 50? What about my next generation? And right now, we have the ability to be a responsible citizen, right, corporate citizen. And how do we enforce and support sustainability um, investment and sustainability themes um, uh, as a bank? It's important to talk, to be Resonate well, resonate well with the young um, workforce. As a successful um, entrepreneur, Danny, um, what kind of advice do you have for new and young and budding entrepreneurs? So I think the key advice, key key piece is actually I mean, there's again there's hundreds of things, but things that you need to do right. But the first thing you need to get right is actually understand your product, yeah, and to understand what is your USP in terms of unique selling proposition, and what does it differentiate against your competitors. Because if you don't know the market and understand your competitors and why it makes why would people choose your product, right? So that's very very important. I think the other piece of advice I would say, you def, as an entrepreneur, you definitely need to have grit. And what I mean by grit is that because you know going through my entrepreneur journey is always like been a roller coaster. Yeah. What you see me now is that, yeah, of course, blah, 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 et cetera. Now, maybe I'm CEO of NASDAQ listed company, but behind the scenes throughout this journey, I had so many nights where I couldn't sleep, didn't sleep because mm. I was worrying about you know, so many different aspects about the team, funding, the business side of things. So you have to be emotionally ready for that. And you also have to be able to give up and sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. So I know Maggie mentioned she was an entrepreneur. So when you're an entrepreneur, nothing gets done for you. You don't have, yeah. you have to do everything yourself. So having that grit is very, very important. And lastly, I would say always having a really strong sense of humility is very important. Because when you have humility, you're, you're grounded. Yeah? And that means you always want to achieve and accomplish more. So when you also have that, again, you're never, so even for us as, as a solicited company, we want to continue to push the envelope. We want to continue to be innovative because at the end of the day, as Maggie also mentioned, is that you know, customers now, they have lots of choices. Yeah? The competition is very wide and you want to be able to step ahead of that and being able to deliver true value to your customers. Thank you so much. Um, on behalf of HSBC Wealth and Personal Banking, thank you once again, Maggie and Danny, for your great sharing. I'm sure everybody has learned a lot. And thank you for the audience for joining us at episode one of Wow Talk. We hope to see you again at episode two. Hi, at HSBC, we have a lot of wealthy clients. Some of our clients created a startup being an entrepreneur. So definitely, wealth is not just pure by inherent, but can be generated yourself.